All right. Uh, just want to. Um, um, I have the honor of having James Gruller here today, uh, a man with tons of knowledge in terms of transportation here in New Jersey. I am really, really honored to have him here. Um, uh, so at this point, I turn it over to James. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for the West Orange Library. Uh, when we're thinking about when we, where we live in West Orange or the oranges and we look around, we see roadways and we see buildings and we think, well, ever since they've been there, ever since we were there. But what came before it? What came before it were the railroads. The railroads is what made these towns what they are today. When we look at the railroad map of the 19, uh, 19, around 1900, let me see if I can change this line. If you look at the northern part of New Jersey, which is this area in here where we are, you can see a major Condens a collection of railroads going to West Orange, going to uh, to Hoboken, lines that were connected and were building up these areas. These were built by companies that were looking to ship their products. These were looking for passengers to get into major cities, to move around the, the entire state. This is before automobiles and mainly the only way of getting around was by horse cart. In the 19th century, thousands of miles of electric traction were spread across the straight, uh, state from Trenton to Newark. This is, by the way, a 3,500 Newark fast line car sitting in the middle of Edison, New Jersey. Mm. I tell you, this place does not look like that today. <laughs> but this was Edison, New Jersey. And all the electric lines were some of the fastest, most connecting, and ran on the streets and also on private rights away, as you can see here. By the 1930s, the public service company, which ran the electricity for the entire state and also the trolley system, started to phase out their streetcars for electric buses and a lot of the trolleys started to fade away and basically become extinct. This car here is a farewell to the Hudson River trolleys. There's only two of these cars in preservation. Now, one of the things, the only one that did not fade away was the Newark City subway. This was a subway that was built out of the old Morris and Essex Canal, one of three in the United States and one of the only one that's still running and still running today. These cars were bought secondhand from Minneapolis and they're called PCC cars, President Conference Committee cars. They were very efficient, very streamlined and they lasted right up to the year 2000 from 1953. They were built in 1946 and 47. Now, since we're all living in this area, I thought people would like to see some views of this area with streetcars. This is down on Main Street with a streetcar near the Lackawanna station. You can see the amount of cars were building and the streetcars were becoming an absolute annoyance. Bloomfield this Avenue. Bloomfield Avenue and Broad Street, and this is the telephone building. And of course, the uh, Bloomfield uh, Savings and Trust, which is long gone. The company had many of these deck roof of cars, which they built in Plank Road in Newark, and the car house is still there. But one of the things we never think about is what is this place going to look like in the future? This is Ridgewood Avenue and Bloomfield Avenue with the streetcar coming up the line. This is what you have to be my age, which is in your late 70s, to really figure out, ever see any of these streetcars. That's the school there, isn't it? Now, today we have a different kind of streetcar. I was part of an organization 
and strangely enough, a Republican organization that really got in when Christy Whitman became governor of the state. When she became governor of the state, one of the people that we had in light rail, uh, we, we formed the light rail panel. We had a woman called Phyllis Elston, who was a genius at politics. And she had the year of Chuck, Hy Chuck Hytayan, who was the speaker of the assembly. And we were able to put in front of the new governor, the idea of building a light rail line a light rail line that was mainly based on abandoned and little used rail, freight railroad tracks. The top picture is Hudson Bergen. The bottom picture is South Jersey, which is diesel uh, MUs. They have no overhead wire because there's a diesel engine inside. The Hudson Bergen uses all of this here, this former railroad. All of that. The rest of this is city. This is all for this is former railroad all the way down here. And this is former railroad of the Jersey Central. So we what we were doing was revitalizing these conduits of public transportation that the freight railroads and the passenger railroads did with something new, something that could be much more amenable to the public. We pushed very hard. There was always a battle in the state between the North and the South. And we had the light rail panel, which was made up of Rose Heck, uh, Joe Doria, and Alex DeCroes. And we fought NJ Transit because they already had a waterfront office, but because they were Democrat, of course, they're seen as the enemy. So anyway, <laughs> what, we, what we had to do was get, get up our own team. The other thing that, which came with the Hudson Bergen was extensions to the New York City subway. This was a real gem which carried a lot of passengers. People are not aware of how many passengers these lines carry. I mean, they just look at them and say, oh, the train goes by, train goes, another one goes by but they don't know how much they carry. This was all in operation all the way from the 1930s when Penn State, Newark Penn Station was built. But originally the new extensions that we made were from Branch Brook Park to Grove Street. Now the line at the end of Grove Street actually went all the way to West Orange. And that's how West Orange got its passenger railroad and freight was from that line, it's called the Orange Branch. And it moves over this way and connects with the main line, the, uh, the, uh, the Booten Branch. So we also made an extension utilizing the original tunnels that went into the public service building or what I call the public swindle building. And basically <laughs> we used part of those tunnels and we went out to pack and also up to Atlantic Street, Riverside Station, uh, Riverfront Station, and then Broad Street. Goodbye. Still, yeah, I'm, I couldn't get my the, the sound to come on this guy. I don't know why I can't make the sound come on my computer. Go into the low. My iPad, so I'll see. Him. Tell him, Rodriguez. How does he do that? Sure, sure. Uh, oh, is that Bill Schilling? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, on the right of your screen, you'll see a blue, two blue boxes, and it says mute or ask to unmute. Just bring your cursor up to the right hand corner, you'll see it. Bill? Yes, I'm trying, it's not working. I don't wanna hold you guys up, so. No, no, that's okay. Bill, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, here I can it is. hear you. Okay. Can you see the pictures? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yes. Yeah. I can see. I'm. I'm. I have my iPad going instead of my normal computer, so that, oh, that's okay. okay. All right. I'll just follow that way. Right. Sorry. So anyway, one of the remarkable things that we were able to do 
was we were able to shove under the governor's nose. We asked her, did she have a transportation plan? She said, no. We said, guess what? We have one and here it is. And we wanted, we fought very heavily for the Hudson Bergen line because the Hudson Bergen line was we thought was going to be in a much heavier car to going to Jersey City. When we built that line, that line was from here all the way down were all railroad yards, all the way to Exchange Place. That was originally Exchange Place. It was originally the end of the Pennsylvania Railroad. You had to take the ferry into Manhattan. All the railroads were stuck except New York Central on, on Manhattan. So all of this is all repurposed land that was would turn out to be apartment houses, office buildings. You go down there now, you would never believe that a railroad track ever went through there. Hmm. We one of the things that I'm proud of was my fighting for low floor cars because I was editor of Attraction magazine at the time. And by looking at the European cars that were coming out, they were all low floor. By low floor, I mean that you can step off the curb and go right into the car. You don't have to have high platforms. And originally, the, the uh, waterfront office wanted high platforms. And I did not want to see, after 80 years, transportation come back to New Jersey with these big high platform stations in the middle of town. It looked hide hideous. So we settled on a 70% low floor, which is high here. It drops down. It's low all the way to here, and then it comes up again. These cars, by the way, were delivered, 29 cars. They were delivered off the boat, put together, and every one of them ran perfectly. They were built by Kinky Shario, and that company was a, a really a choice company that we wanted because of the quality of the work. By the way, this is the car the way it looks today. And the car has been running wow. 21 years oh. and it's in spotless condition. <clears throat> but I found out in watching people in Europe no matter what height the car was, where the low floor section was, that's where everybody went to. And you can see here how nice the stations are. They don't, you know, dwarf the neighborhood. This is a station where we have an elevator that goes up to the Jersey Heights and is very heavily used. Yeah, that James, you're right about that Congress Street station. It, it is very heavily used. Yeah, it's mainly used by by the public and not the riders because the elevator service is way goes way beyond what the uh, ridership is. Right. And we can see how nice the light rail fits in downtown. I mean, the light rail fits in beautifully. And we have here a two car train. One of the things about the light rail, especially the cars that we're dealing with, they are so flexible. They are so incredible. They can do anything. And they, they have a huge capacity. I've seen up to five section cars in Switzerland. We, my wife and I are on a trolley and this entire high school let out. The one streetcar swallowed up the entire group. Mm. Street running, here you can see the old World Trade Center in the background. Street running, fine, they look perfect. Subway running. We have a station in the middle of Bergen County, uh, Bergen Line Station, which is one of the highest riding stations because of the high Spanish population up above. And now they have a, a, a real, prior to this, all they could do is take a bus into downtown Jersey City. Now they're there in a few minutes. You can run it elevated, as you can see out here on uh, in 8th Street in Bayonne. And you can see it was elevated here because we had hopes of it going over the new Bayonne Bridge. But the Port Authority, who is only interested in cars, nothing else in transportation, forget it. Buses or cars, fine. Any kind of light rail, forget it. The, the track on the bottom shows high speed running when we ride out to Bayonne. 
And we also run, even though it's a two track line, we are able to run express service. And uh, basically it's very highly populated. If you look at the Northeast car, the average ridership, now this is pre-COVID, this is around 2008. I haven't upgraded this. It's probably zilch by now, but they have 57 miles and they use 284 pieces of equipment and they get 120,000 riders a day. <clears throat> if you look at the Montclair Boudin branch, it's 58 miles, has 69 pieces of equipment, all heavy duty as you see, and they have 16,000 miles. The third highest is the Hudson Bergen has 15 miles, 42 light rail cars, and it has 44,750. That number has since gone up. The Newark City subway is the fourth highest ridership with 20,000 riders, only six miles long and has only 16 cars. As you can see from 2000, when we started building the line, we built it in segments. And by 2008, we were up to 41,000, 2009, 50,000. Today, we have 65,000 riders a day on the Hudson Bergen. Hmm. Now, the Hudson Bergen, while it's called the Hudson Bergen, does not go to Bergen because the next phase is to go north. They are going to extend the, uh, a, an extension to go over to the waterfront uh, in South Jersey. A survey that was done in 2008 was showed that the light rail was about 70% surveyed indicated that the HBLRT was an important factor and they're making a moving decision to the city. You can't have a big city unless you can get there. The city and the rapid transit lines are virtually the bloodlines to the main body of the city. This is another section that says one third of the riders selected the LRT due to its convenience, frequent service. LRT is cheaper than other services. The travel time savings compared to previous modes. Last but not least, but about 12% of LRT riders stated that they use the HBLRT due to the new deployment decisions, which is a strong indication how HBLRT service helps to stimulate employment and growth in an area. There were no restaurants downtown when HBLRT opened. Now, of course, there are loads of restaurants in Jersey City. And Jersey City is enormously built up. One of the things that I'm really proud of, and this is based on being a rail fan and knowing something about the history of trains, is that the BMT originally had compartment cars. And these were sections like this middle section here. And they could add sections to the train to make it five car, make it three car, make it seven car. And we have since, because of the high ridership and because of the stations are too short, we had to add another section, which was easy. We purchased one of these little uh, center sections, which has uh, wheels underneath it. And this body hangs on both of these sections. Mm. So this is a three car train connected to a two car train. So we got a night and what we were able to do was just convert the two car trains, to three car trains by adding the bodies, which was done right here in Jersey. And basically this is exchange, this here is exchange place. That's where the Pennsylvania Railroad was, where this building was, was once the Erie. This used to be the Pennsylvania Railroad's freight house, where they would actually, in elevators, take the boxcars up the floors so they could unload them. I mean, there was, they had stables down here for cattle. I mean, it was just incredible, the amount of railroads that were down here. Because all the railroads, the Erie, 
the Lackawanna, uh, the Pennsylvania, the Susquehanna, the New York Central, all wanted to get to the Hudson so that they could get this. And of course, the real estate has boomed. What I'm talking about tonight is the Newark City subway, which now extends all the way to Grove Street and Bloomfield. And I want to talk about the Hudson Bergen, which goes from 8th Street. The west side is, is going to be extended to the college and the new housing project and is up at Tunnel Avenue. Try, from Tunnel Avenue, it'll go north to uh, further north, which you'll see later. This is the extension of the Northern branch, which will use the old Erie branch, which had one freight train a day. It went five miles an hour. The track was unbelievable. And this line will continue to Englewood Hospital. Once it gets to Bergen, it'll be tremendous. Excuse me a second. The one thing I really would like to do, and I think is very possible to do even now, uh, is basically in the Newark City subway now turns left to go to Grove Street. This is a, uh, a, 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 a old, not an old agent, what am I going to say? Uh, this is a, a house which is, has elderly people in it, and it's not a rest home, but it's something like that. And basically what I want to do is turn right onto the old orange branch, which runs right behind this. It has bridges and everything and goes through Branch Park. This is what the line looked look like in the 1970s. This is part of the, uh, of the um, Tiffany building, which made all their metal work. And here we see an Erie train and this lovely station and the platform. This is the same area a few years ago. The tracks are all ripped up, ripped up. Of course, it doesn't go to Bloomfield anymore. And this is where the orange branch would curve in, right here. This is looking from Broadway looking at the right of way this is the way it was in the 1970s they were still running passenger service as they were the west orange i mean west orange i think quit in the 70s and basically all this track is gone so we have this huge right of way and what do we want to do we're going to make a trail out of it or a bike path i mean give me a break we got to move people. Lots of people in this neighborhood have to take buses, the uh, 13 bus to get into Newark, and it takes a long time. And we want to extend this line to Kearney. This is what I'm talking about. This is the way the Orange Branch originally ran with steam engines and diesel. Now we have it turning down the Grove Street. What I want to do is have it make a left turn, which it can, and use this, this orange branch, stopping at Broadway, which is a busy stop transfer to the 13 bus. There's a huge high school that's been built here since I started talking. And I would like to build a park and ride. I don't even know if that's possible anymore, coming off of Route 21. So you don't drive into Newark, you take public transit. What a shocker. <laughs> this is what it looks, this is the aerial view of the line. It's all graded, it goes through a huge cut um, that they, the Lackawanna cut through there. And if we had 21, you could come off 21, go right into a parking deck, go right up to the station, which would be elevated. And basically you can go out the same way. And this is a swing bridge, which is no longer in use. There is no reason, none, why the light rail and the path and the bicycle path and whatever thing you want to do can exist together. They certainly can. It's also safer because you have public transit going by. If you want to walk through the Bergen Arches at night, good luck. Yeah, true. <laughs> Now the line would come off of Branchville Park. We have Broadway, 
we would stop at Kearney and then we would hit, we could hit North Arlington and we could have a connection with the Kingsland connection if that ever operates. Then we could, uh, from here, we could go to Secaucus transfer via a branch and then go directly into the Hudson Bergen line. So we would connect two of the light rail lines. This is completely out of whack, but if we can just get to Kearney, if we could just get here, I would be very, very happy. The other, the other major section I wanna talk about is this tree line cut, which prior to the Panama Canal was the deepest cut ever made in America. And it was called the Bergen Arches. This is a shot of the Bergen Arches when it was running, it was four tracks. This is also another area where I want to bring either light rail or, or subway rail through here to go out to the Meadowlands, to the shopping center, to the, to the uh, sports arena. It's, it's all completely overgrown. <coughs> it's cut out of rock as you get further down. All of this is rock. On this side over here is Route 139, which by the way is a very funny thing because somebody made a mistake in uh, the DOT and instead of looking at the ampersand for one and nine, they thought it was a three. So they labeled the road 139. So, oh. <laughs> so all of this, all of these, uh, these things here can happen. We, we do much more connections to people and, uh, and basically we also do connections to other states. If we had my complete dream of extending all the light rail lines, the, uh, the Newark City subway could go to West Orange. We will probably be only be able to get as far as Watsessing because uh, some of this line has been covered over and buildings have been put there. Once that happens, yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. there's something that I'm not sure that I do right. Why? The dice roll, I'm not sure that I got that. The what? Right, yeah, that's what I have. I don't know who he's talking to, he's talking to someone else. <laughs> but anyway, basically, the, uh, there, there can be a line to all the way out to Patterson, Clifton, and Nutley, and Belleville on the old Newark branch and going through Kearney oh, yeah. come down the Secord to connect with the Hudson Bergen. And the Hudson Bergen can go to Tenafly and also to the Meadowlands. So there's a lot of extensions that could be, all of this is on railroad property that the state, when the railroad said they have finished with their railroading, they're not gonna use the right of way. They, the state has the first chance to buy the property. And the politicians are the only ones that get this stuff done. It's not the engineers, it's not the construction companies. It's them, Charlie. They're the ones that get the things done. And they're the ones that have to be provoked. They're the ones that have to be woken up to their chances. And by the way, one of the things that happened, we said it would that when we brought the light rail over from, from downtown Jersey City, that the M we, got, we got the MTA and made a, a foothold in 2007 to bring the MTA into New Jersey to connect. And it's one of the heaviest ridden bus lines in the MTA system. The S89 Limited comes from across Staten Island on Victory Boulevard over to Bayonne to, uh, to, uh, to 34th Street Station. And basically Joe Doria, who was the mayor of, that, of Bayonne at that time, really fought to have the light rail extended further and not be a little choo-choo trolley line that people could take a little ride on. Really, it is a hard workhorse. The longer you make it, the stronger you make it. This is what the Arlington station could look looks like today. I mean, it's a mess and it, it doesn't look like anything. Since then, the tracks have all been torn up and it used to be a two track line. And what we wanna do is transform it 
to something that looks like this, where people can actually get to other cities, other stores, other businesses, other family members without taking the car, without riding a bus. The only picture I have of the old West Orange station, this is, why, this is exactly where the West Orange station ended, right here, right near the uh, Auto Zone and Dollar Tree. <laughs> you know, classic businesses. Yeah. This is where it ended. And that's what built West Orange. There was nothing there. I mean, West Orange was bupkis. There was nothing there. This is the only picture I have, and it's from my bank's wallpaper of the West Orange Station. And you can see uh, West Orange, Erie Railroad, and they're the happy couple, the Edisons, wonderful people. Just wonderful. Daily commuters, I'm sure, right? Oh, yes, yes. Especially when it went electric. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of this being the end of the line at Grove Street, this is where the Watts Essing station would be back here. Of course, in the in the gully here is the M and E. That's where it runs. And so anyway, it would make a, a tremendous station for people to connect to the M and E. This is the Garden State Parkway. You can see it goes under, you could run tracks under here for a storage or track to uh, store cars. So we have plenty of room to do this. And the line further down is all great separated, except for Bloomfield Avenue, which we would have to put up gates. But you can still see where the right of way was. And it's all overgrown, you know, nature will take it over if somebody doesn't do anything with it. Thank you very much for listening. Um, James, you have some questions in the chat. All right, let me see if I can get to that. Hang on, folks. Hold on. Oh, are there any plans for a stealth highway connecting Edgewater to the Jersey City? Uh, by the way, that went on for years. I was always blamed for building the stealth highway. I'm still building it and uh, soon it will be opened, uh, but so far no good. What is the optimal length of a, of a station platform? I really don't know. I think it's 110 feet. I'm not too sure. But the next time you have a, a tape measure, go check them out. I know that we had a problem why we had to put the third section in the cars and make them uh, make up five car trains because the, the tracks were curved. I don't know what happened to my video, but the tracks were curved and they went around the station so we couldn't extend it. <clears throat> and we, especially at Exchange Place. Uh, I think the Hudson, the Essex Hudson Greenway to Montclair is a joke. I think it's a waste of money. I think very few people will use it and it's not the High Line. And the High Line uh, could have been a transportation system in itself. The former Montclair Booton line really worth $67 million. <clears throat> you must remember you're dealing with a private corporation. They may run no trains for years. And the place can look like hell. But the minute you sit down with a private railroad and say, I want to buy the line. Oh, my God. You know, you almost <laughs> like you're buying the main line of the Santa Fe. I mean, <laughs> just, oh, my God, we got hundreds of trains running. How could you even ask such a question? I can't tell you about the X project because that's still in the works. My, uh, there's somebody out there who knows me, I'll find out who you are. But basically the X project, why well, I wanted to bring the number seven or the L line uh, to Jersey City and basically <clears throat> up the uh, Bergen Arches 
and would stop at the um, Secaucus transfer, go further to the stadium and to the new mall. That is the only way they're going to get uh, something like 36,000 riders an hour to go mm -hmm. out to that stadium because you'll get a 12 car train every two minutes. You know, and each train has a thousand people in it. So if you really want to go big, you got to really spend the money. Uh, we see Biden's infrastructure plan budgets 85 million for public transit. What projects would you prioritize from New Jersey's share of the windfall? Well, I'll tell you, nobody can think of anything unless they think of the tunnel first and the, and the bridge. Those two suck up all the money that you can find. And basically those are the two that everybody, uh, well, somebody's really coming late. Well, that's the only two projects that I see money for now. We may be able to get money for the West Side extension over to the waterfront. And uh, this really, there's really some, uh, you know, the design of that isn't really functioning as well as it could be. But anyway, that, that line may get it. And also we may see money coming in for the Hudson Bergen going north up to um, the hospital up there. So, but basically I tell you, the more, more that you wait, for instance, I went back to take a shot of Watts Essing station, which is way down in here. There's a huge apartment building there now. I mean, you can't wait these things, you know, because somebody will build something here and apartment buildings are being built right next to the M&E. And, but these light rail, these former railroad lines, they may look like nothing, but they're very important. Any other questions? Hey, Jim, this is Cassandra Martin. I haven't figured out how to work the track, the cat, the chat, excuse me. But I have two questions. One, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So when the WPA came about, did, did it make any impact on the development of the rail system in New Jersey and New York? I really don't know. I, I know that uh, what had happened was what killed the rail systems like the West Orange branch and the Montclair branch. Montclair branch was truncated. Uh, in other words, they made another connection further up the line. They didn't need the rest of it that went, went through Branch Brook Park. The really thing that was killing the railroads was the automobile. Uh, okay. there, was no, there was no fighting it. And Jersey is a car culture, period. So the WPA, there was some bridges like the Jersey Central in 1930s was rebuilt entirely. They built uh, Elizabethport Station and they rebuilt a lot of that line, all of which is gone, totally gone. You couldn't even tell what was there. <laughs> so some money did go into railroad projects and that's the only one I can think of off, offhand. Thank you. And my other question is, I don't know if I understood you correctly, but was there a time when one could travel by train from Newark to Camden? And if that's the case, why can't that happen? Why doesn't that happen now? Because there's too many roadways. And basically, the one thing you always got to remember is I always tell people I don't plan uh, welfare light rail systems. I plan light rail systems that make money, big money with big ridership. I have in my collection a sign from that car that you saw way up in the front, the 3500 series car. Where is it? Hold on. I have this sign and wow. it says Newark Camden. It's from one of the 3,500 high-speed cars. Wow. And basically, uh, no, I think that you, you couldn't buy the right-of-way. It's just impossible. The only thing that I have thought about is all these high-towered electrical, high-power towers, they have a pretty big right-of-way. 
you could share that right away with those towers. That would yeah. probably do it. But getting into Newark okay. Okay. and getting into Camden would be impossible. Thank you. Sure. It's uh, Len Resto. How are you? I'm fairly well, Len. Good, good. I had a question for you. Um, do you know if the state, and I doubt it's MJ Transit, but I would imagine the Department of Transportation, do they have a listing of all the abandoned rail rights of way in the state? Because I, I, I'll tell you why. I was on a um, Zoom presentation for the Essex Hudson Greenway last night, and not a single person from NJ Transit was on that call. And there were 155 participants and they're all talking about how it's gonna revolutionize transportation, but they're talking bicycles and walking and they don't, they're not talking light rail. And it's such a tool that would they be taking away and precluding. So to your knowledge is, does anybody have a current list of rights of way? Well, I'm going to tell you something that I that I started, and the rich uh, rich Roberts started at Francis in the 19, late 90s, early 2000. We had the uh, what is that? Where all the uh, I'm going to eat when this is over. I don't know when it's over. Quiet. The other thing is that. What do you the, mean quiet? I mean quiet. You're interrupting the show. Okay. So anyway, the. Uh, Go ahead. You're interrupting the show. North Jersey, the North Jersey people that have all the members that, you know, dilly up the money for different projects. I forget what, what they're in Newark. Mary Kay was the head of it. Oh, NJTPA. NJ, thank you. NJTPA. I asked NJTPA to do a listing of all the lines that were in dead or near dead <laughs> or abandoned. That sits somewhere on a shelf doing nothing. So I think, Len, especially a person like yourself, uh, I think that you could definitely ask NJTPA to find that and get a copy of it and read it. They'll have all the lines. Thank you. Yeah. But I most certainly uh, was thinking ahead. The whole thing about being a visionary, you don't think about what the hell you got now. You don't think about what tomorrow will be. You think, what will this place look like in 2040? You think it's gonna look like this? You're crazy. So you gotta think about what do you supply 2040's needs in 2021? That's what you gotta think of. Yeah. And New Jersey never thinks that. No one ever thinks that way. I have seen very rich Roberts, maybe a few others, uh, Steve, if you're on the line, he was that way. And basically, you know, they just don't think of the future. There is no future. It's just now and my paycheck. Yeah, and there's so many towns that are developing like crazy, chasing rateables, and they're taking away land. It just, it's out of control. I know when we were building Hudson and we had a lot of pushback from Belleville. Oh, they walked out of meetings. They were unbelievable. Uh, they were furious. Not now. That old Edison, that old battery plant torn down, new shopping center, new housing. I mean, the place looks wonderful compared to what it looked like. It looked like crap. Uh -huh. You know, and so basically a lot of these buildings uh, and it's very interesting, if we extended the line from Grove Street, we would either have to dig under Bloomfield if it, that was, you know, Jersey Transit's very nervous about stopping the automobile. God forbid it should stop for a train crossing, you know? You know, they get all panic stricken because the car is everything. But basically, um, if that line goes to the m and &E, you'll have another direct route to change to go into Manhattan. And you won't have to go all the way into Newark Penn Station, which will right. take some of the load off of that. But the other interesting thing is off of uh, 
the Garden State when you're going north <clears throat> and you go over the bridge that I showed, there's a factory building which is now lofts. That factory building was the manufacturing of Sprague electric trolley motors and it was that way since the 1950s. Wow. It's amazing. So anyway, and I, you look at and you look at the river line, what it's done for that area. Oh my god! And yet Glosker, oh my god! We don't want those people coming into town. And I've had to get up and say, "Hey, I'm one of those people." By the by, <laughs> you know, it's it's really amazing. But the the, the Hudson Burden has done wonderful things for Hudson County. Absolutely. Yeah. You'd never hear it from Hudson County, but there it is. James, well, what about the Whit Penn Bridge? The Whit Penn Bridge? Yeah. Yeah, that was part of my idea for Portway. I wanted to build a container highway to get trucks off Route 1 and 9 and uh, around the Tunnelly Circle and uh, have them go directly to the rail yards. And part of that was a new bridge over the Cedar, um, uh, what is it called? Some, I love getting old, I forget everything. The- um, Join the club. <laughs> yeah, I know, no, that doesn't help me at all. But basically, uh, we built a bridge over in, uh, on uh, Doremus Avenue, which had been a former trolley bridge, which they paved over and was tilting to the left. And it also had the Jersey Newark water pipe going across it. So I had that bridge replaced because of Portway. Because once you start connecting these dots together, they became like a necklace. It's something that it's not just one project. Every This one depends on the other one. The other one depends on the other one, et cetera, et cetera. So one of them was the Whitpen Bridge. And unfortunately, I have designed things that have killed some of the things I really love most about the state. One, the Newark City subway PCCs, gone. Two, the old Whip Pen Bridge, gone. So anyway, but it's what you gotta do for the future. So I'm still looking to see if we can get Portway back on, on the boards. Because we have the big, I tried to, get the uh, Port Authority to buy most of the land in Bayonne. And I had a meeting with the, uh, all the big high mucky mucks and I carried on for about a half hour. And uh, they said, thank you very much. And, you know, just ushered me out the door. The next day they wrote out a check for six million, six hundred million dollars and bought all of it. So <laughs> never will tell you that. But anyway, and God forbid I should say I had something to do with it. How dare a little speck like me. But that <laughs> but I wanted that to be the deep river port because the uh, the uh, the North Bay uh, is 65 feet deep. And you don't have to worry about dredging because I thought lifting the Bayonne Bridge and all of that. But then I saw the other logic. There's always more to the story. And the Port Authority told me we have two big clients in Union County and in Newark. And we put a lot of money into that place. We got to do it. So it's understandable. So, you know, so sometimes you got to go with the flow. And they were completely right. Wow. It's not a pretty business, but we were very lucky to have Frank Wilson, uh, who was the DOT chief. He knew how to get things done. Rose Heck was a firebrand and actually really fought a lot of the battles uh, by herself while all the male, all the male representatives took the exit door. She stood on her own and battled her way through many meetings. And, uh, but Phyllis Elston was really, who died recently, was really the key to all of this. She got us the political. And also I may mention Brian Clymer, who was the treasurer. And Brian Clymer was able to get the money. And also Lautenberg and other people were uh, also involved in this. Uh, I'm trying to remember 
the other guy's name, I just can't think of it right now, but he was very, very good. And, you know, I got my first $200 million from a meeting with Frank Lautenberg. I was very pleased. <laughs> Nobody gave me that Thanks kind of money. Leadership before. just is, is unbelievable. You know, DOT commissioners, somebody should be fired to yesterday. Oh, I, well, you know, but I tell you something. I was with Frank Wilson when we went to Montclair and where the Montclair connection is now and is operating now. Uh, I don't know, it's run by NJ Transit, so they could still be there waiting. But basically, uh, Frank Wilson said, I'm gonna get this done. And a guy in the audience said, I've been standing here since 1931 and I've heard that. Frank Wilson said, I'll do it. And he did. I mean, he was incredible. I mean, they always talk about politics as you don't, it's, you don't wanna see how sausages are made. But I'll tell you something, he knew how to make great sausages. Yeah. When you mentioned sausage, I refer to the DOT commissioner and Kevin Corbett as spaghetti and meatball. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, you got to have professionals. We had a lot of professionals. Frank Russo, we did this as the Newark, the Hudson Bergen was done as a public private. People say, well, what is that? Well, it's where the private interest, mainly the contractor, has a stake in the thing. And we didn't have to go to one station to build, one co contractor to build a station, one person to do the, the environmental study, one person to do the electric, one person to do the car design, it was all under one roof. And when we came into transit, we set up a private operation called New Rail, which was of transit, but not transit. So that was the thing because we didn't want to have anything to do with transit. We just saw them as slowing things up and getting things much more you know, complicated than it was necessary. And we really did it. You know, I must have been seen as a smart ass and they're somewhat right, but basically you got to get it done and you got to get it done right. It's public you have, money. You have to be a smart ass. I mean, I was on this thing last night. And they are, you know, one of the bad things with this Essex uh, Bergen Greenway is they're calling it the 9-11 Memorial Trail. I mean, that's really ridiculous. You so know. imagine any, well, no, they're not freeholders now, they're uh, commissioners. Yeah. And any municipal official voting against 9-11. Yeah, yeah. Disgraceful. Yeah. That yeah, is, it's, it's absolutely a joke. I was sit. I got used to go, I had to go to this hospital over on 86th Street or 83rd Street and 2nd Avenue. And um, uh, Janice Sackett Khan, who was the DOT chief, was building, bu building bike lanes all over Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking down 86th Street and I see loads of traffic and buses. And I see three bicycle riders going about 20 blocks away. What a waste. <laughs> if you think I'm going to get my 77 year old ass on a bicycle and go biking up Sixth Avenue, you got another thought coming. It ain't <laughs> happening. And it's a lot of older people that have to get around. And it's a lot of the poor. They're not going to get on a bike. Yeah. That's it's, you know, it's the... Uh, Don't get me started. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's too much. I don't know what happened to my picture. All of a sudden it disappeared, which is not bad. I'm not complaining. James, I got a question on this greenway. Where, where is this greenway they're proposing? Where? Uh, they're proposing, I, I assume, through the Bergen Arches, uh, and oh no, it's not through the Bergen Arches. It's um, through the old Montclair branch. Right, the Norfolk Southern right. as it Norfolk now. Norfolk Southern, which would go through the Meadowlands. Right. Steve oh. Marks, Steve, the Newark Lake. Marks is on the line. Stephen, are you on the line? I am here. Stephen, tell us about the Greenway. Where's it go from where to where? Uh, I believe the proposed Greenway would go from uh, Montclair. Um, through Glen Ridge, uh, Belleville, Kearney, and to Jersey City. Yep. Oh. 
Pete Marx, by the way, was a compadre in the battle to get things done. And uh, he's, a, he's a good friend and, and a good man. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, are there any more questions? No, thank you very much. This is informative. Well, I want to really start looking at these old railroad lines. They're not just garbage. They're not a place to throw tires or your old oil cans. But these are places that can be recycled into rights away for public rapid transit. It's our future. Yes. So annoy your fellow, call Joe DiVincenzo, say, enough with the parks, you stupid ass. Let's start building <laughs> some transit. <laughs> Yeah, I would only, I would I would leave out the word stupid. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, thank you James. For putting it on. Good yes, job, absolutely. Jim. There'll be more. Good yes. work. All right. Dave, how do you Every feel, Stephen? Yes. How do you feel? Good. I feel well. Well, you screwed up lunch, so there you go. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll put the next week on. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Everybody. So long. Oh, my God. James. It was a hit. It was.